This is episode 13 of Fluid Mechanics Tutorial. Today we will work on seven examples about Bologna equation. You will definitely see similar questions in the midterm. The previous video already illustrates that we can obtain flow rate from Bologna equation. Let's work more examples on that. Looking at the figure, actually the small tubes extending from the main pipeline measures the pressure. And these pipes are common for all fluid mechanics problems. So, in the figure, we label points 1 and 2. If you remember how to read for the pressure, we label this barometer height as H1 and this barometer height as H2. So we have P1 equals gamma H1 and P2 equals gamma H2. Of course, point 1 and point 2 here lies on the same streamline. So we can use the Bernoulli equation. Points 1 and points 2 here are lying on the same elevation, so these terms cancel out. And actually, point 1 here is the stagnation point. You can imagine that the fluid come here and then get trapped inside, so this one also cancels out. And then we do some simplification. And then we plug in the previous results. And we cancel this out. And this becomes G, so we can solve for V2. And then we plug it in. And then we can find the flow rate. And then we are done with this question. Let's do a slight change in the flow configuration. So we label point 1 here and point 2 here. What is being changed is that the point 1 is no longer the stagnation point. Let's go to the previous slide and still a look. And then you will notice that although the question is the same, the answer is totally different. So again, we label the barometer height and then we again have point 1 and point 2 again have the same elevation so this cancels out and then we have and then we substitute this one But then we have to deal with this term to find the flow rate. So if you still remember the continuity equation, we have A131 equals A232. Then we solve for V2. And then we square both sides. So we continue from where we left off. And we plug in this into this. So we get and then we can solve for V1 and get and then we can solve for the flow rate. Here the diameter is 0 0.1 and the speed is already calculated from the above. So we can get Let's change a bit again And now this point here, point 2 becomes the stagnation point You will see that the answer is again different from the previous two examples And we also label point 1 H1 and H2. So we have P1 equals gamma H1 and then P2 equals gamma H2. Again, we can use Bologna equation. The two points again have same elevation and then point 2 is now the stagnation point. Then we can do some simplification. And now it is H2 higher than H1. And then we solve for V1. So we can compute the flow rate. 
Again, the diameter is 0 0.1. And this actually is a constant. Although these three guys look the same, this minor difference in the configuration seriously affects the result. Make sure that you learn these points are stagnation points and don't miss them out in the exam. Now let's work on an interesting example. Some of you have learned of siphoning. Without any machine, water can move from one container to another due to gravity. Well, you have to suck the air away before the operation, but sometimes this simply doesn't work because there is formation of bubbles in the tube. And the formation of bubbles is called cavitation. The formation of bubbles automatically occurs when the pressure here drops below the vapor pressure. So in this example, we want to know that when the siphon fails to work due to formation of bubbles. So now we start working. Let's label points 1, 2, and 3 here. This sort of point labeling is really based on experience. As you recall, this long tube on the left is the barometer. It measures the atmospheric pressure. So we first determine the atmospheric pressure from its measurement. As you recall, P1 equals gamma H plus vapor pressure. And now H equals 9.2. So we plug it in. And clearly, the Bologna equation is applicable here. We first compare points 1 and 2, and we set Z1 as the datum. Since point 1 is quite far away from the siphon, we can take its velocity as 0, and then we use point 1 as 0, so this goes 0, and then we require that this one is the vapor pressure, and then we plug in what we have, And then point 2 is 1.8 meter above point 1. This cancels out. This also go away. And then we can solve for V2. Now we look at point 1 and point 3. Point 1 and point 3 here have the same pressure. And that is the atmospheric pressure. So both go away. And then we have already taken 3, 1 equals 0. And we set Z1 as the datum. So this goes 0. And point 3 is h below point 1. So it is negative h. So we can also solve for 3, 3. But we must know 3, 3 to solve for h. So how can we obtain 3, 3? We must again use the continuity equation. And then we solve for 3, 3. And then we can solve for h. And we are done with this example. We shall work on another problem. I think the hardest part here is to do the manometer part right. Again, the small tube here extended from the pipe measures the pressure difference. Now we mark down point 1, point 2, point 3, and point 4 in the figure. We also set this difference in level as A. I like to always start from pressure first, so let's do the manometry. So we can relate the pressure at 1 and at 4. Again, the Bologna equation is applicable between points 1 and 4. Now point 1 is the stagnation point. So let's bring all the things to one side. Now we already know that point 1 is 1 meter above point 4. And we can copy this down. And from this relation,
But what is this guy? There's no fee for to proceed. We haven't used this piece of information. Of course, we can determine the velocity from the flow rate. The diameter here is 0 0.3. So V4 is the Q divided by A4. So we can plug in this value. This cancels out and we get and we are done with this problem. This next problem involves two separate systems and it will take more steps to complete. Let's stay calm and look at what the problem asks for. The problem asks to determine the diameter here if the water level in the tank remains unchanged. So for the volume of the tank to become constant, we must have, and this one goes zero. If we label this as outlet, then this flow rate here is actually just, we know the velocity since this is just the free jet. But what about this term? This term is our unknown since we have to determine the d. So in overall sense, this whole thing is our unknown. So we shall know this guy to proceed. Now the flow rate in for the tank equals the flow rate out for the nozzle. So now we let point one and point two in the nozzle. Again, there's a barometer here, and it tells me that p two equals gamma one point two. Of course, the barometer equation is applicable here. Since point 1 is exposed to atmosphere, its pressure goes zero. And then point 1 and point 2 has the same elevation. So, now we have... Again, to simplify this guy, we have to use the continuity equation. So now... And we can plug this in. Finally, we can solve for V1. So we can determine the flow rate out of the nozzle. The diameter is 0 0.03 So we have flow rate into the tank And this finally equal to But the flow rate out of the tank equals A0 equals pi d squared divided by 4 And we haven't determined the velocity the velocity is just the velocity of free jet and the depth of water above it is 0 0.7 so that is square root 2gh and that becomes so we can plug it in And then we can solve for D. This is our final example. Now we assume that the problem is steady and water is incompressible. And the question says that the viscous effect is negligible. So that we can apply the lonely equation between this point and this point since they lie on the same streamline. And this point and this point since they lie on the same streamline and this point and this point since they are also lie on the same streamline but actually we can also apply Bologna equation between this point and this point since we have Bologna equation between this point and this point and this point and this point anyway let's start our work and apply Bologna equation between point 1 and point 2 so gravitational effect is negated and we drop these two terms and then we can plug in the values V1 is the flow rate divided by the area and we continue to substitute the given data
and then we can solve for v2. And then we repeat the procedure to obtain the pressure at point 3. The last part asks for the flow rate, and then we apply continuity equation as this, no? which is just like KCL. Only one is going in, or the other three is going out. This guy is already given, but we haven't found these two guys, so we go on and calculate. And for Q3, so that we can solve for Q4. And we are done with this example. So today we finished total of seven examples. And this will prepare you well for the chapter three questions in your midterm. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching. Feel free to ask us any questions and give us any feedback in the comments.